Okay, here we go. Go live. Go live. Dun, 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 dun. I've got my tweet ready to tweet and everything. <laughs> it says you're live. <laughs> you're live. Well, an error occurred. Hmm. Wait a minute, something's happening. Are you seeing oh, it? Yeah. Are you seeing it? I'm getting an ad, so that's good. An ad? Yeah, yeah, so I think it'll probably happen after that. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, okay. I can see you. I can see me. Okay, it's a little delayed. <laughs> well, you're seeing more than I am. All I see is a little staticky screen that says an error occurred. But is it streaming? I guess it doesn't really matter what it says over here. Yeah, it's definitely streaming. I can see things. Uh, <laughs> I see somebody. It looks like Mr. Exiato there. Yes, I do see that. I, I was the first person in chat there. Yeah, it's a little bit laggy, so it's kind of throwing me off watching myself and my past ah, self. Yeah. My 10 second past self. Alright, so let's just see. Okay, they say the stream is good. So even though I can't really see it on my end, I'm going to proceed on. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see it. I can see the things. Sorry if you're new to the show or whatever, folks. Uh, this is the first time I've tried to stream uh, with this particular software, so I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. All right, so I've got the Crimson Diamond up and running. Are you seeing it, Julia? Yeah, I am seeing it. Yep. Probably not hearing it. Are you hearing it? Uh, I muted it because I didn't want to mess myself up. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sensible <laughs> enough. Okay, I don't hear the music. I just muted. I just unmuted. Let's see if I can get this music to play. What about the, in the stream? Is it playing in the stream? Um, yeah, I'm checking right now. Oh. Looks and sounds good. I got okay, somebody good. named Anna long, here. Okay. Were you guys oh, oh, Anna. and gals oh able God. to hear the... Uh, Oh my gosh. Oh, what's that? Just <laughs> I'm watching that the wonderful old music? thing of yours. Okay, here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay, so everything is working? Everything seems working. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to turn down the audio in the game. I have to go. It's going to take a, a couple of clicks uh, to get that going. But anyway, let me introduce everybody here. I've got Julia Minamata here, the developer of a Hi. game. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Called the Crimson Diamond. And if you like the uh, Sierra Adventures, Laura Bow series, Police Quest, my favorite King's Quest, any game like that from that era, I think you're going to be absolutely enthralled by this video. <laughs> uh, we're going to be playing the demo a little bit here, Julia and I. We're going to have a chat about it, maybe a little behind the scenes stuff. What do you think, Julia? Did I lose your audio? Well, you're kind of popping in and out. Let me see if I can. Just gonna go to new game real quick, just so I can lower the volume here. Yeah, there's the problem. <laughs> okay, not that that you don't want to hear the audio. It's great music. Okay. Let's see. How do I get back to the start? Just gonna take me back to the. There we go. All right, is the volume okay? Is it still too loud? It sounds a little bit loud on my end. Yeah, it's just too loud. Did that not save my setting? It probably didn't. Yeah, but after the intro part, there's not really any that much music, so it hopefully won't be too. Big you know, maybe what we, what we should do is it. just watch the intro. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can cut the volume because I think I won't be able to see the intro because it's really well done. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, let's do that then. Just going to restart this. Okay, there we go. So what we're going to do is just watch the intro, then we'll cut the volume, and we'll get into the.
shifting windows or anything? Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, are you shifting any of the active windows or anything? Because uh, sometimes I don't hear you at all, and then I, sometimes I hear you perfectly. Oh, it's probably just a vestige of this uh, setup we've got going on here. Are you hearing the game audio? You might be hearing something different because you're on Skype. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the music's playing. I just I turned it on very briefly. Fisherman found a massive diamond in the belly of a fish. That's what I call a good fishing trip right there. This could be a real boon for our mineralogy exhibit. We need something better than those dilettantes over in geology. I want our exhibit to be the talk of the town. And there's our, there's our character, Nancy. I'm not gonna try to do her voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, you could do her voice. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a little far from I know you're that. just a clerk with formal training. <laughs> we can't spare anyone else to head up there. I can do him, I'm a professor. <laughs> head up there. I'm not usually in the habit of sending unsupervised young ladies into less than civilized regions. But as luck would have it, the discovery was made near a lodge, where I'm sure you could stay while you conduct your field work. Pack your bags and catch the train up there. <laughs> I'll do my best. I mean, aren't you already... I mean, I'm sure if you are a fan of a certain era, these graphics are already grabbing. You probably wish you were at the controls right now, controlling this game, folks. It's just, just, you'll get your chance. some hours yet. I should know because that's where I'm going. Hmm. Coincidence? I'm a clerk from the Royal Canadian Museum. My boss sent me to check out the diamond claim up there. I hadn't heard of that discovery. How interesting. I don't know if we're supposed to be suspicious of Jimmy, but... <laughs> like, oh, okay, a lot of coincidences here. To give our mineralogy exhibit a boost. The geology exhibit draws more visitors. I'm not a trained mineralogist, but ever since I was a kid, I loved learning about rocks. I spent hours in the library reading all about this. See, I knew I liked this character. Uh, so when I found out the Royal Canadian Museum was being established, they had a mineralogy department, I jumped at the chance to work there. So it's a big opportunity. Where are we be staying? I think we're about to get to our first wrinkle. A place called the Crimson Lodge. <laughs> she, who would have thought? She's staying there too. I'm a birder. I hear there are nesting colonies of cormorants up there. And I wouldn't mind seeing these two locks while I'm in the area. Traveling companion. All right, you and Kimmy chat amiably for a while. Day wears on, driven with the train over the tracks. The monotony of the scenery lulls you into a deep sleep. Okay, I think we have arrived. <laughs> so we've already had our luggage stolen. Field 
接。Yeah, I think she probably would notice him. <laughs> Very suspicious. Oh, he was in the first class car. Is that why you're here? I'm here to see the nesting cormorants. Is that why you're here? <laughs> no. Cormorant? Is that a type of rodent? You know, for some reason, I like this guy. Looks like a friend of mine from the, from the Netherlands. Sent to pick up just one person. A European fellow, expert mineralogist on the assignment. Oh, this guy's from Antwerp. I wasn't told he'd be bringing any. Oh, I wasn't told he'd be bringing any, bringing any <laughs> secretaries, wives, girlfriends. Um. Uh, sorry for the confusion, sir. Jack. Sorry for the confusion, Jack. We don't know this man at all. I'm Nancy Maple. Okay, so she's here to study this diamond. Her friend is here for birding purposes. The nesting cormorants. Both here to stay at the lodge and go about our business. <laughs> He's from the lodge. I'm sorry to tell you, ladies, the lodge has been closed to the public for months. You didn't hear? My boss, Mr. Richards, he's getting on. He's done with the lodging business. All he wants is peace and quiet. This whole diamond fiasco starts up. He's not pleased. Gentleman is here on government orders. But you two? Oh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> this is quite the intro movie. <laughs> Thank you. It is. Yeah, it's, I know it's a little on the long side, which is why I, I, I added an inventory item at the very beginning that people can use just to get a, a rundown of what the story is in case they don't go ahead and watch the movie. Oh, I love this. First accommodation is the lodge, a few hours away by automobile. Look here, I'll drive you ladies up to the lodge. You know, I thought for a minute he was just going to leave us here at the station. I'll <laughs> you back here so you can catch the train. The whole game is a walking simulator. You can have like 50 screens of them walk along the track. <laughs> the same screen looped. I think that's... I don't know if we want to watch the whole intro. I think we're just about done, though, right? Yeah, I think we're just about done. <laughs> yeah, I love the part where you get sort of meta. meta. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it doesn't happen anywhere else, but in case people are concerned. Ah, uh, yes, of course. So you did all these uh, graphics yourself, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I certainly did. <laughs> All the little animations, everything really. Except for the music. I think back in the day they probably had a whole team of people working on this. Yeah, I, I think most of those games had maybe like yeah, a dozen people. Maybe. But everyone would be sort of doing multiple projects at the same time, so it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> she is obsessed with these cormorants. <laughs> yeah. The characters are, yeah, I mean, they have, they, they tend to uh, lean in really hard on their interests. I think it, that's not uncommon for everyone. Yeah. Take it right back to the train station. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm guessing we're probably not going right back to the train station. I, I think you might be right, just call it off. I'm just guessing there. <laughs> Who cares about shiny rocks? No use to anybody. I mean, this is exactly like my We shall see about that. Yes. Weary companions resist your attempts at chit chat. Is it possible for Jack to hear you from the back seat? Okay, there's some 
Maybe they're pretending to sleep because they don't want to talk to her anymore. <laughs> this, is what, this is where it gets sort of meta for me. <laughs> this is what the game graphics are actually going to look like. Although it's funny because um, there, there is a night phase in the game, but it doesn't actually look like this anymore because I thought it would be too dark. So, no, it's not happening. This is actually not what the... No, you don't know, Jack. Except this car, of course, the car looks... This car looks pretty darn sketchy. <laughs> I'm surprised it got us out of here. The wheels aren't even spinning. All right, I think we are <laughs> into the game. <laughs> all right, so let me get the volume down. Oh, I should, probably shouldn't skip all that, but... It's all good. Yeah, the volume seems to want to go up. I want to leave it on a little bit because it's got really good music. There isn't much after this, yeah. I haven't really put it in yet. It's pretty much the last thing I'll do, I think, as I go through the game. Alright, so let's see. Whoa, got a bunch of comments. <laughs> I wasn't looking at the comments, Julia. I don't know if you were looking at those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I've got if a we had any questions already. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I was, uh, I was telling Julia before we started this chat, we had a little pre-chat, if you will. And you know, she sent me the de you know the demos available on Steam. I'm sure you could find that. You might have played it already. Uh, so I was making the I wanted to play the game a little bit, make sure everything was working uh, before I uh, interviewed her. And my idea was I didn't want to play very much of it because I kind of wanted to discover the game as I was chatting with her. But <laughs> that plan kind of went whoop. <laughs> you know, I really got into this. I played all the way through the uh, this demo. It seemed to go by oh. in a flash. Wow. And it kind of ends up. Yeah, it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah, you know, I kind of felt like <laughs> right when it was getting really, really good, you know, that's, it says, you know, okay, okay guys, we've got to wait now for the uh, for the game. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I just can't say enough great things about this. I mean, it's really, really well put together, I think. I don't know, maybe we should just start with the, the like, how did this come about? What gave you the, have you been a fan of, Adventure games? I mean, you don't see a lot of those uh, those folks anymore, right? <laughs> we don't. Um, I Well, my first adventure game that I remember was King's Quest 1, and a, oh, a yeah. Tandy 1000, I think. I think it was the green monochrome, but then eventually the CGA. And uh, it scared me. I think I was about... Uh, like you a young by an alligator? <laughs> yeah, probably. Got chased around. <laughs> just horrible and i think i don't know if that's where the anxiety dreams of being chased around came from but they certainly didn't help uh i i, I really loved it um we, we somehow skipped over king's quest 2 played king's quest 3 4 5 um 6 7 and uh it's just where my fond childhood memories are and when i started making this game it didn't start as a game I'm actually an illustrator by, by trade. I'm an artist. Oh, interesting. And it, it started with the backgrounds first because I, I kind of taught myself how to do the pixel art thing. And uh, when I first learned how to do it, the first thing I wanted to do was... You I make it sound so some... easy. Oh, I just taught myself. <laughs> it, you know I mean, what? The thing is... <laughs> I appreciate this, you know, because I know how much, how hard it is you know, when you're working with basically little blocks, right? Yes. You know, to make that look like anything, much less look good. Well, I actually think the EGA palette really helps to make it a little bit easier, for, at least for me anyway. That's why I approached it. Because I sort of uploaded some, you know, I downloaded some pings of, uh, of Colonel's Bequest, and I opened them up in Photoshop, and I really studied them and took a look at how things were done. And uh, I just started building stuff from there, I just from scratch pretty much. And so the game didn't start as a game, it just started as a series of rooms that I was making, almost like I was just setting up a little dollhouse, almost. 
Hmm. And uh, yeah, and so what happened was my first room was kind of all out of scale. It was just everything was too big or too small. So I, I needed to make like a character, a sprite to, to really situate her in that environment. And then I wanted to make her walk in the environment. So that turned into learning how to do the animation. And it kind of all kind of evolved from that. I wanted to move from room to room. I wanted there to be a door between the rooms. And so I kind of started building it like that, just as a house without really thinking about what I was building or why. And the story part came after, which yeah. is I know is kind of like a backwards way to do it. But yeah, that's kind of how I started. Yeah. Oh, it seems to, to work as... Everything works really well. I even think, you know, somebody might probably throw a rock at me for saying this, but, you know, a lot of the, you know, I've played a lot of those old adventure games and all, pretty much all the Sierra stuff. And one of the things that always uh, happened to me was eventually you get stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when you were, I haven't really shown you this, this parser yet, but, you know, you don't know where you're supposed to go and how to solve the puzzle. <laughs> You know what you're, what you're supposed to do. Uh, so ultimately, you end up having to look at a, at some clues or a walkthrough. Uh, but with this, you know, at least in this demo, you know, I felt like you were almost reading my mind or something. Oh, you know, nice! Cause, you know, because so every time I was about to get stuck, you know, there'd be a little clue, a little message pop up and say, maybe you should go eavesdrop on, on somebody. Or, you know, a little little bit of a prod uh, to get to where I need to go. Uh, so I think that's, you know, that to me is a sign of, you know, some really good instincts for adventure game design. Because you know, I played a lot of these, and I'm pretty sure even, <laughs> I'm sure anybody watching this and has played those can, uh, can vouch for I me mean, just how easy it is to get stuck and play this. You know, especially with a parser, you know, trying to play this guess what the developer uh, was thinking. You know, so, I mean, I guess I'm sure that was intentional, right? Yeah, because to be honest with you, I was I was not good at these games when I was playing them. I don't think I finished a single adventure game without the help of a hint book or a walkthrough. So I think that kind of worked to my advantage because with that perspective, when I started designing it, yeah, I wanted to make it not hard. I wanted it to be something people could finish. I wanted it to, to be something that people could complete, even with a text parser, which I know is kind of asking quite a lot of people, <laughs> especially nowadays. Um, so, yeah, I knew that was an extra added layer of difficulty. So when I was designing it, I wanted to make sure that it was easy for people to navigate through. And just hearing you say that you were able to get through it, I'm assuming without a walkthrough because I don't think oh, that yeah, exists I didn't have to check it. I mean, to <laughs> me, once I, have to go to, once I have to look at a walkthrough, my enjoyment level goes down. <laughs> did but, you use the notebook function that's in the game? Oh, or did yeah, you know yeah, about it? Think... Okay, yeah. So I remember like some of those games, especially if you go way back, the graphics are so muddy, you can't even see like, what, what is that? <laughs> uh, but I can see like there's a hat. And to bring up the text parser, I just type anything. Mm -hmm. So you get the hat. Well, <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> and I notice most of the original commands are here, like look ground, right? Bedroom boasts a selection of rugs. There's one under the coffee table. So I didn't feel like I was getting overwhelmed here. Mm -hmm. A triptych of small woodcuts on colored paper hangs in silver frames. A black and white photograph of a mountain hangs over the fireplace. You know, I don't, it's not one of those games I feel like, at least so far, where you have to try everything on everything. You know, you can sort of just put yourself in the story. <laughs> and what you're supposed to do makes sense. Yeah, I think that's another consequence of having a text parser is people have to think about what they're doing instead of trying to click on everything and put everything on everything else. There's effort involved in the input, so you kind of have to really direct yourself in a way. Maybe I can use that poker. <laughs> the poker might poke through your pocket. <laughs> I'm not sure you're like... Now, back in the day, they would have let me, <laughs> she would have let me get that and then and show it, right? <laughs> Just, okay. Yeah, just kind of feeding it into her pocket. Yeah. Um, although I will say, I did I, I did speak to someone who did play the demo, and he said that some people do have a bit of, you know, for whatever reason, have mobility or dexterity issues with their fingers. So the next version of the demo will have, like, uh, parser shortcuts. So, for instance, to open the door, you can type 
O space D. So it's just for common stuff. I've decided to just shorten it up a little bit for people to make it faster and easier to get through these things. Because typing open is just <laughs> so <laughs> arduous. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like here, it's very, very nice the way these, these portraits pop up. How are you doing? Now, are you thinking about maybe adding some uh, some voices? Ooh, I, I really don't think so because, well, <laughs> yeah, first of all... I, no, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> I never really liked those. I mean, I guess if you get Josh, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's one thing, but, you know. Yeah, that would be one thing. But, yeah, I mean, for, to be era accurate, I guess I wouldn't have voices to begin with. And there's also for me um, something, something special about reading it for yourself because you kind of have to create the tone of that character in your own head and that's part of the interaction between you and the game. So I kind of felt that way about it too. Yeah, I would agree with this. I kind of felt like uh, she's kind of a little bit like Nancy Drew. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of, uh, was it Miss, Miss Marple? Exactly. Exactly, you got them both. <laughs> you got them both. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you mentioned the notebook. I want to make sure I show that. I think it's, what is it, N? No, it's uh, L. How oh, do I get the N. notebook? What is that, N? N or, or no. Oh, yeah, it I need to hit work. enter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Yeah. so this is something I really would have liked to have had back in the day. So, you know, again, if you if you played something like King's Quest or pretty much any of those games, you're going to be like, what do I, what? Where am I supposed to go? I've talked to everybody. I've looked at everything, I've picked up everything, I've used everything on everything. Uh, I don't know what to do, and you're supposed to stand in like a certain spot and as a unicorn comes by or something. I, I mean, here we've got this notebook we can open up. It's basically a checklist, but she doesn't give you everything here, right? We just know no. who we're supposed to talk to. We don't know where they are or where to get to them. Yeah, and so that's another thing where I wanted it to be easy to get through the game, but I also wanted to reward people who were exploring and asking people questions. You can learn way more about what's going on if you don't just follow this, but if you do get stuck, you can follow it, and then you can kind of nudge the game through progression. I know. She wants to talk about these birds. <laughs> you know she does. Carlos. <laughs> Nowadays, they're rare. Fishermen kill them because they think the birds eat up all the fish, but it's not true. And I gotta admit, mm -hmm. I don't know what a nesting cormorant is. I, I guess that's <laughs> one of the things we'll learn about. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but when you when <laughs> there's actually um, no. <laughs> no, there is there is. A, so uh, the the set, the demo here. This is a night the nighttime sort of phase. And for the first for the first part of the game, the demo, you can't leave the lodge for obvious reasons. I didn't want to show everything uh, during the demo. But the next part, after the cliffhanger, it's daytime, and you can actually explore some of the grounds. And there, you might get to see. I don't want to spoil anything, but you might get to see some cormorants. I know they've been so hyped that how could they not? <laughs> Expectations are high. <laughs> cool. Yeah, this is one of the things I was going to talk to you about because I get a lot of requests. From people you know why don't you review the space quest series you know why don't you do some videos about those and, you know it's not that i don't like the games far from it it's just it is so hard like how do you cover a game like that and not spoil all the you know pr pretty much just spoil the game for somebody that hasn't played it yet I mean, do you have uh i was going to ask you what your thoughts are on like the you know how do you want somebody to, you know when people get around to reviewing this game I and mean, what's the right mm -hmm. way to do it so that you can you can review it, you know, give a pretty good sense of what the game is like, but at the same time not be spoiling all the stuff that you really want the player to find out. Yeah, that's kind of a tough one because I, for, for me, because I am doing it by myself and, and any time, time anyone wants to play this or discuss it, I'm always wanting to like be there and to, to talk to people and engage with people. And, you know, if people want to do a whole let's play from beginning to end, showing everything, I mean... Just to know that, that there is that this passion to do that is, for me, really cool. And I would like to think that if um, playing it and actually watching someone play it are two different things. And uh, it wouldn't discourage people from, from trying it themselves. Um, because I don't think I could stop people even if they wanted to. But for me, yeah, any type of... Uh, yeah, so this is what the night would look like. 
um, well, now we have Nancy outside. So it doesn't look as dark blue as that other one because I thought it was too, too dark. Um, but yeah, so for the LPs, I would love to have people do LPs, showing, showing, showing different aspects and everything. Um, and I know that it is a pretty, it's going to be, it's a pretty linear game. Um, so there's not really a way to show it without showing, you know, a lot of the stuff. But I mean, not a lot of people know everything about this game, which, as you said, so maybe they'll miss something. Who knows? Yeah, I think, I think so. What's on this bookshelf? You know, I've actually played all the way through this demo and there's still little things I realize I haven't done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stuff I haven't looked at. But that's interesting to me that you made this sort of as a dollhouse. Yes. <laughs> Just having some fun. I mean, I can't, now that you mentioned that, I'm sort of looking at the game in a different way, like all the detail here. Maybe that's a good strategy, a good way to design a game like this, because these are very, like all of these rooms are really interesting to look at. Like this one's very, this was the bathroom, very, very pink. This must be that really pink <laughs> bathroom they were talking about. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, there are rooms in the house that I honestly don't have any game reason for them to be there. And that's the, sort of a luxury I have being the person who is making everything. I'm not hiring an artist to make the backgrounds, which means I can just make myself do it however many extra backgrounds I want to do. Usually with these things, when you're hiring an artist, you're not going to get them to build rooms that you know are specifically attached to a certain part of the gameplay uh, but when i was making this i was saying well you know what well there has to be more bathrooms than just one bathroom oh, this yeah. is an inn so there has to be more and there have to be closets and and there was so yeah so i mean what happened actually that was interesting is as i'm making the game and as i was building the story there are elements that i look at that i've already built that i'm saying oh i can use that for something uh, and I can incorporate this part of the design of the, the lodge into this puzzle or into this part of the story, which is kind of the reverse, I guess, of, of what a lot of people might do when they're when they're setting out to design something. And that's just because I was able to think about it in a way that meant I could make extra rooms that don't do anything. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you've, well, you probably have played Mist and Riven. I've played a little bit of Mist. I think everyone played just a little bit of Mist. Yeah, everybody's played a little bit. <laughs> I remember their, their big catchphrase was, we build worlds. It seems like that's kind of what you've done, right? Built the, built the world first. Yes, yeah. Now yeah. you're thinking about... See, I see something like this. My first thought is, I've got to get in that chest. <laughs> There's got to be a way to get that thing open. It's locked. <laughs> There's got to be a key. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like looking. Unfortunately, that doesn't accomplish anything. But yeah, that's you know that's the the sign of a good adventure game when you're, when you're looking at a graphic like this, and it just makes you want to. <laughs> you know, you just want to open up stuff and figure out what everything is, and something about the way it's drawn, I guess. <laughs> like, what are those? Is those paint cans down there? These paint cans hold red paint and purple paint. <laughs> See, I'm already thinking, like, hmm, let's see who's been painting. What's that? <laughs> yeah, that, that's another funny thing I've encountered when you tell people this is a mystery game. Yeah. Just right from the beginning, when they look at the intro or they talk to characters, everyone starts building all these little ideas in their heads about what people's motivations oh, yeah, are. Or... That's the fun. That's why people. Yeah, love yeah. Yeah, so that's all the stuff that they're creating on their own without even me actually doing anything. I'm just providing almost a setting for them to have their imaginations run wild. And it's a lot of fun to see that happen. <laughs> that's Jack's job. Oh, she doesn't want to pick <laughs> up that room. <laughs> yeah, that's an old trick, though, I notice. And, like, you have to close the door to be able to see what's behind the door. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh that trick. That, that's got me a few times. Not oh, in this Oh, my goodness. Game. No, no. I, I don't think I would be so cruel. This is just great. I kind of uh, kind of get distracted here by the graphics, but you can't use case in this game. <laughs> what am I supposed to? What is that? A, a luggage? A luggage? I think I should spell it right. <laughs> oh, that's a, a big thing about these parts of games. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I'm fine as long as you're uh, spelling things right yourself. I've played a few adventure games way <laughs> back where the developer actually misspelled the words and. Then you had to get the the misspelling right. Uh oh. Okay, maybe I should go back to the mission. <laughs> <laughs> the mission. I'm supposed to talk to. I've only talked to one person, Kimmy. 
Well, that's another thing I wanted to point out, too, is just these, these characters. You know, I think you've done a really good job making each one of these characters so distinctive. Um, I think it's a sort of, it was another kind of um, consideration for the player experience because it is a mystery and you need to sort of figure out who these people are and when they're doing something that is uncharacteristic or if you feel like they're hiding something. So mm -hmm. I kind of really wanted to heighten and, you know, really concentrate what's characters and make them really, really very much distinctive from each other. And uh, I, I actually look at, I never played L.A. Noir, but um, I know that there's a famous uh, animation of someone lying and they kind of really go over, t over the top of the acting because you need to convey to the player what these, what these characters are and who they are. And, mm -hmm. and just having them be such specific characters as they are and just easy to read almost is, I think, is really important, especially for a mystery um, story. Yeah, I agree. And I just don't know who in the world could be watching this and not want to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so she's kind of our... How would you describe her? Margot or, the, or yeah. Nancy? Yeah, Margot. Margo. Oh, there we go. Paramore. <laughs> More glamorous. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying. They're glamorous. Shining flaxen hair, fair skin. <laughs> yeah, I think this game would have a good chance. She's primping for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people that, even if they haven't played these, uh, you know, the old adventure games, just anybody who really likes mysteries, you know, should check this out. <laughs> I want to get to the part where they... Uh, where she's eavesdropping. Oh, I see, yes. That seems to be a recurring motif. And somewhere i got to get a glass. <laughs> I forgot. The, maybe I don't want to spoil that part. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's the downstairs. So let's see, I think there's still a couple people up here I need to talk to. Yes, yes. I think there's, there's one other person in the upstairs that you need to talk to. Yeah. Let's see, who did I miss? Talk to Kimmy, Margot. Oh, there we go. The old uh, Poirot looking guy. <laughs> yes. The penguin. The Belgian man, who, who looks a little like Poirot. Oh. Well, the Freudian slip there. <laughs> Mr. Respa. God, he just looks so suspicious to me. <laughs> I guess we're not supposed to like him. He's not as polite as Poirot, that's for sure. Oh, no. No, not at all. It was fun to make these little looping animations to be things that you could just have them do forever. So we had Margot primping at the mirror just repeatedly. We have him unpacking an, an eternal supply of white shirts. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I could maybe later on he should be like, you know, combing his, <laughs> waxing his mustache. <laughs> that would be fun. And there's a couple more characters. I don't know if there's a microwave and a hamster anywhere in this game. <laughs> but you know what this, I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> this game was set in uh, 1913, 1914, so I'm going to go with a no on the microwave. Um, there could be hamsters, but uh, they're not in the game yet. Maybe that'll be DLC. A little plant called Chuck. <laughs> what did that say? Something about almonds? Oh, yes. A bowl oh, of yes. Jordan almonds sits on a low table. See, any mm -hmm. good mystery has to have that almond. <laughs> oh, really? It smells like almonds. Oh, that's right. Of course. Was of that, course. I always get it confused. Is it the cyanide or is it the... Uh, that would uh, be cyanide. What's the yeah, other poison they're always using... Uh, Strict nine, I think. Oh, there's so very many. But yeah, the famous ones would be cyanide, strict nine, and arsenic. Arsenic. That's what I was trying to yeah. So which one smells like uh, almonds? Cyanide. cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> this lady. <laughs> uh, 
What on earth are you doing here? Are you another one of Evan's gold digging girlfriends? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just look at her. <laughs> I mean, not at all. But I am a diamond digging mineralogist. Professional to handle this. Have yes? you taken an almond before? Oh, I can take the almonds? Uh huh. Oh, let me try that. Take an almond. Is she going to complain? Never knowing when a confection that could double as a small <laughs> what? Never knowing when a confection that could double as small caliber ammunition might come in handy. You take a handful, small caliber and ammunition. Yeah, I should show the uh, the inventory screen too. I think I could just hit oh, yes. I, I for this. Oh yes, yeah, or tab. Oh, I can just hit tab too. Yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, so we get the graphics here. We can click on these. The Lucky Mineralogist, what is this, Loop? Yeah, wow. Loop. Loop? Loop, yep. Here with your name attached to a handy lanyard. Mm -hmm. We got a newspaper. I should probably read that paper. <laughs> it, yes, that plot synopsis. Jordan almonds, colorful, unpalatable, and harder than most rocks. <laughs> anyway, what is, so this is like a look mode. Mm -hmm. And what does that do? Is that for studying? Whoa! Well, I didn't see this before. Uh, the surface of the Jordan almond is disconcertingly smooth and unblemished. Can nothing scratch its indomitable shell? <laughs> Getting me kind of obsessed with these almonds now. Do you have any opinion of, of Jordan almonds? <laughs> I don't even really know what they are. It's uh, like a candy-coated yeah, almond? Yeah, yeah, it's just a sugar shell and... Uh... You won't find this. I'm more of an kind of, M and M peanuts kind of guy. You know. Me too. Those are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> These kinds of confections—they're more like for decoration at weddings than anything else, really. Uh, you will find them in uh, not at, at Michaels potentially, like a craft store oh. in sort of a decoration aisle, not in a food aisle. Uh, that should they, be a clue right there. It's not going to uh, be delish. <laughs> well, I see they're they're colored. Well, you know what? Maybe uh, I'll get a nice big bowl of these. Yeah. Set them on the shelf here. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to get a glass from somewhere. I got a glass last time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Talk to Kimmy and Marga, Margo, Albert, Nessa. We're still missing a few people. Yeah, it's a good setup, too. You got to have a, a way for the player to meet everybody, right? And start thinking about the characters and get the layout. Yeah, I think that, that to, yeah, that was to me sort of an organic way to really uh, reinforce the characters and the plot at the very beginning, and also for you to know a bit about what your, who your your character is. So I mean, you get it eight times, I think, eight times she she introduces herself to other people. So by the end of this act, you are so clear I, I on what she's see. doing, who she's there for. Yeah, yeah. And cupboard. What is this little thing called? A dresser. I see buckets. This looks like a, maybe a wardrobe. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, if you type look, you get a pretty good overview. Now, would you say this this look, you, you kind of spell out like with all the significant items in here? Yeah, yeah, I think it's fair to say, yeah. Sled, shovel, and a mop. Because I know back in the day, they try to trick you by not mentioning the one thing you <laughs> needed, right? No, no, I, I don't. I don't do that. If if you're looking and it says what, what that is, if it doesn't mention it, then yeah, you're not going to need it. It's probably just like set dressing. You know, I'm happy. Just I can tell what everything is. <laughs> you know, it's just not some little blur somewhere that's really a cat. <laughs> I mean, here, yeah, you, know, you can see those are glasses. There's one type of glass. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself though, because nobody knows why I'm looking for a glass yet. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> no. There we go. And here's my favorite character. Well, there, I'm busy cooking up dinner. <laughs> and there's a, what's that, a piece of fly paper. Now oh, that yeah. is just something. I know <laughs> I'm going to need this fly paper at some point. <laughs> yeah, it may, it may figure into the story later on. Oh, you know it. You know it is. <laughs> you probably have to make a cat mustache with that. <laughs> Let's see. I think that's about all I... Well, you know. 
<laughs> There's probably all kinds of stuff I haven't figured out yet. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, so here's she's about to eavesdrop on somebody. Hmm, I hear voices near this doorway. Maybe I ought to listen nearby. Mm -hmm. So I thought this was pretty cool. So you kind of get nearby. Oh, wait, where? You got to get in the right position. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm not the right doorway. Listen. Oh, maybe just listen. There we go. And there's a little music at this point. Oh yes, yeah. Get some more characters. Press enter to advance the text, escape to skip the cutscene. You don't want to do that. <laughs> what are we going to do about it? You aren't going to do anything. Listen, if we want to talk, we'll do it privately. Meet mm -hmm. me in my study. Yeah, this... You probably know I'm a big Nancy Drew fan. <laughs> you know, this just really reminds me of a good Nancy Drew. <laughs> There's an illustration of, of Nancy Drew where she is at a doorway and it looks exactly like this. And I swear I did oh, not see it until problem. after. <laughs> okay, that's quite the room there. But let's uh, go ahead and talk to these. Fine. Let's see if we can play some pool. <laughs> ah, not right now. Mm-hmm. There will be now. something to look forward to. Gotta get that chalk. Can't use chalk. Oh, that's right. That's actually a good item to think. Yeah, that is there. Hold on, I'm gonna take a note. Take a note. <laughs> now there'll be a chalk. Something to do with the chalk. <laughs> this is weird. I never played a game, an adventure game, in front of the person that's developing the game. It's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Did you listen to their their talk in the study after dinner? Did you get to do that? Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, right now or before? No, no, no. After after the dinner that that, that, that happens. Oh yeah. Yeah. Kimmy, Margo. Well, I got all the way through the demo. Oh, that's true. But did you yeah, so did you listen to their conversation in the study with the drinking glass? Is that what you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. I guess that's there's a way there's, there's a way more fun way to do it, which if we get to it, I will show you. Well, who am I missing here? Nathan? Oh, yeah, I and think Corvus. it was Corvus. In oh, I got to go oh, in here. That's right. Talk oh, okay. to this guy in the overalls. My name is Nancy Maple. I don't actually know Mr. Richards, Royal Canadian Museum. Yeah, I didn't realize you were from Canada, so that's why we had this stuff of the Royal Canadian yes, uh, yeah. Museum. Good, good. <laughs> I think Canadians, uh, doesn't Can uh, the government of Canada give people, uh, developers, some extra funding if they mention Canada enough times? And they... <laughs> I'm not joking. There I are, think that's a thing. No, right? no, there, there, are, there are grants. There yeah. are grants. Um, that I have not applied for yet, but the deadline is in October or November, so I kind of have to get on that. Yeah, I think that would be it, something well worth looking into. Yeah, I've been told. I have been told that I, I should look into that. There's Ontario ones, and then there are sort of Canadian ones too, I think. Or Toronto ones. I mean, I'm in Toronto, actually, so Toronto and Ontario ones separately. Yeah. You could double up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Cover our bases. Are you planning to do a, a Kickstarter type of deal, or? Um, eventually, possibly, yeah. Um, with some maybe a you know a fun physical uh, good here or there. Um, so that will be way in the future. Though I'm not even really thinking about it right now. At the moment, I'm just focusing on developing the game. Uh, I'm going to be going to PAX West to help out there and hopefully you know meet a few developers. Hmm. Uh, that happens in, yeah in a couple of weeks. I'll be down there or across across over there. And, uh, yeah, just trying to do the beta testing for the game as it is and continue building it. So I'm not really thinking about the Kickstarter yet, but I, that kind of thing. I am talking to someone who is really good at them that is uh, thinking about helping me. So we might yeah, look I into mean, that later. I think you totally should because this, this demo here, I mean, I've seen so many Kickstarters where they don't have anything nearly this, you know, this completed representative to show people. And they're, 
you know, they're basically like, hi, I'm so-and-so, I did this game back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, give me money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this, yeah. I think anybody, I mean, you got plenty enough here. Somebody could play this demo and they're going to get a good sense, you know, of what you're offering. Yeah, I have been told that it, the, having this demo as it is, is just a really great tool that, that, that can maybe help me and distinguish me from a lot of the Kickstarters. So. Okay, who am I missing? Got Kimmy, Mark, Margo, Albert, Nessa, Nathan. Corvus. Yes, you maybe didn't talk well, to Jack. Why didn't I talk to Jack? I thought I talked to Jack. Is he too busy to talk? Do I have to, like, talk to him a couple times? Oh, no, no, no. That counts still. That one does I don't count. Know, Jack. <laughs> oh, I got to get in front of him. I got to be behind this uh, little, little island. There we go. Sire, I can't talk right now. <laughs> so that He's does busy. count, though? Yes, that does that count counts. as talking. Yes. He's too busy with that meal. Okay. Yeah, his uh, tomato sauce and his dough, whatever he's making. Is it, was it everyone or did, was I... There's, there's no, supposed to be a... Oh, I still got Corvus. Yes, yeah. yeah. Somewhere. It seemed like I... There's not in there. Which one is Corvus? Uh, the guy in the, in the in the room with Nessa in the parlor with the almonds oh here we go another chance to eavesdrop oh yes i've always hated this place <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a hoot <laughs> that line of the dinner i'll wait till we get there but i i really <laughs> cracked up <laughs> It does complicate things, yes. Uh, you do your job and I'll do mine. Game has auto save. Now that's something you definitely didn't have back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so that auto save, does that kick in? Like before I can do something that'll get me killed? No, it's just sort of uh, after you've done something, you know, like you've gone through like a cutscene or whatever, you might not necessarily want to relive it. Just, it's there for that, more, like, more than anything. There's only one death in the demo. Uh, I don't know if you found it. No, I didn't find it. I wasn't trying to go around killing myself. <laughs> oh, you're so I different from some people. Some because... people, that's what they, their favorite thing to do in those old games. <laughs> so many yes. different ways they can die. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, Rick, he said he spent four hours uh, trying to kill himself. <laughs> and he succeeded in the end, but I'm thinking, wow. Yeah, some people uh, play this differently than others. Some people play it differently. <laughs> I think that's the way to, to look at it. I usually try not to die. I mean, call me, call me crazy. Hey, as long as everyone had fun, I don't care how they yeah. play it. Game is all those I like the way that he's looking his nose down at me. <laughs> yeah, I always tell people, I can't take credit for that line. That's a Terry Pratchett line. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Crab. <laughs> What else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, now I've talked to everybody. And I think it's time for to have our dinner, right? Yeah, that should be that. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. Can I, can I steal his kettle? You don't <laughs> need either the piping hot kettle or the boiling water inside right now. Mm. Yeah, that's something else I noticed too, uh, Julius. You, you, know, you get these little reasons that you can't do things but you never make the person feel stupid or like you're Aww. you know being a smart ass you know, i always <laughs> felt like this is, i mean it's kind of funny i guess but you know sometimes it rubs you the wrong way especially when you've tried everything you could possibly think of and you're just trying what is the thing and then mm -hmm. you get this really smart lucky response back yeah <laughs> no i know i know exactly what you mean uh i i'm sensitive to tone as well i i don't like that type of humor Especially when it's someone who, yeah, as you say, they're probably getting a little bit frustrated and just trying about anything. So I like the gentle type yeah. of suggestion and humor. This is giving me indigestion. This guy looks like he's got permanent indigestion. <laughs> this food is giving me indigestion. <laughs> We're not going to leave. <laughs> In fact, please do. Ha, ah, you'd like that. Yeah, I mean, really good dialogue. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm not going anywhere until we find out that diamond came from this land. I've been 
did, then you better believe I'm getting my share. That's what you think. This guy kind of reminds me. Who's the guy from, uh, was it All in the Family? Oh, man. It's a little before my time. Was it, yeah, uh, yeah. someone will say in chat. Yeah, the, I never think of the guy's name. He, that's what we think. He's kind of a Fred, or a Jackie Gleason. <laughs> that's what we think. That's what I'm here to ensure. I'll begin my field work tomorrow morning. Crimson used to be a garnet mining town, yes. Yeah, good mix of characters, accents. The whole thing with the motives, you know, everybody's got a motive and <laughs> a little bit suspicious. We haven't even really got to the main crux of the game. <laughs> they blasted the miners down. Unless the fish had a pickaxe. <laughs> broke into the mine, swallowed the diamond, and then dove back into the river. <laughs> hmm, yes, I see. Sour look on his face. What a lovely... Oh, here we go. So I think this is really funny. Oh, Margo, what a lovely necklace you're wearing. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you. Thank you, mademoiselle. My servant, <laughs> he gave it to me. I'm very fond of it. Mm, a cheap trinket, mischief. <laughs> so mean. <coughs> Misshapen face, Jim, in a cheap setting. <laughs> it's the white garnet, not glass. Mr. Richard, he found it here in Crimson. Did you, Monsieur? Never mind, Margot. No one wants to hear about that. My sapphire. A sapphire brooch. <laughs> this is a real piece of jewelry. <laughs> Bought it myself. <laughs> well, yeah. Of course. Of course. I like you, yeah. I love how you get picked up on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bought it herself. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even like this little dinner scene here. I mean, look at the detail. We've got the candles, the food. I mean, this must have taken a long time. <laughs> this little, yeah. Agenda. Chewing and stuff, yeah. <laughs> chewing. This is really, really nice. Is this plot? Is that how this plot became property of Mr. Richard's father? <clears throat> Various treaties were signed. Promises described in these treaties. I mean, it's it's quite the setup. Do you really think <laughs> you'd be able to pull all these threads together? Uh, it's all written out, so I'm going to hope so. It's all, only in the details where I have to work things out. <laughs> she hates it here. <laughs> uh. After eating a minuscule portion of supper, she's going to get her supper. Lingering over the desserts. That was a lovely meal. Jack mm -hmm. does a good job. It's time to settle in for the night. Yeah, you do that, Nancy. Pretty comfy at the table. Now, I liked how the puzzles in here, too, weren't just mundane, not really having anything to do with the establishing the story. I mean, here, oh, so everything this, this everything wrong, makes uh, sense, right? And, yeah, this is another thing. I wanted it to make sense. I don't, I'm not a fan of the moon logic. And, oh, before you do anything else, uh, you want to see the fun way to listen in on their conversation? Yeah, let's, let's go for it. Okay, so if you go into the study, and you walk up to the tapestry in the study, and you type hide. Let's see, where's the study from here? Um, study is um, at the end of the hall to the left. End of the hall to the left. No, that's not it, right? Oh, I'm sorry, so it's a bit of a lag right now, I don't know. So it's at the end of the hall to the left. Maybe I went the wrong left. Oh yeah, sorry. The the the. So you go north, the, the north 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 until you hit the conservatory. But don't go in the conservatory, and uh, take the left door there, the one with the uh, the desk and the moose head. Okay, I'm there. Okay, and then you walk up to that tapestry that's by the no the window in the north wall, and you type hide. Ah. <laughs> You stealthily slip behind the mm. tapestry. A little digger of Amon Ra. 
kind of. Yeah, before I think I just used a glass. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Which yeah, which is totally totally fair. Although you do miss one visual cue if um, you listen with the glass and not this way. So and it doesn't, you know. Good, this is this kind of stuff right here that you know it's, <laughs> it's just so cool. Like two different ways, very subtle differences. Yeah, and it's not a huge deal or anything. It doesn't really affect the outcome of the story, but it just gives you a little insight onto these two characters and their relationship. Um, because you can see the, them talking. And it's just something that small that happens at the end. So it might give you a different impression of them uh, compared to how you saw the conversation or heard it. It's really clever, you know, because I guess with the glass, you wouldn't be able to see <coughs> in this room, obviously. Your family simple as that. I promise many things of the past. There you go. I'm really curious what, what we're about to see. Well, it's very small, and, you know, it's not a huge deal, but it's just something I wanted to put in. Just don't do anything rash. Get on out of here. Mm -hmm. Get on out of here. I'll be seeing you, Evan. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'd have a lot of fun with him. This guy in the overalls here. Mm -hmm. Oh, the handshake? Is that what I'm... Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you had just listened to this, you might not have known that, yeah, they, they're friends. He's a bit gruff, right? And you might get this impression that him, these two don't have a good relationship with each other, but they actually wow. do, you know? So it's, it's just a small thing. Oh, that's a really cool thing. I like that, <clears throat> the soft touch on something like that. And... <coughs> All right, so I think I'm going to help Jack with the dishes. Yeah, we could do that. I want to go over and check our uh, <clears throat> chat. Do we have anybody asking any any questions? Thanks, Miss. Lots more dishes than usual. Happy to help. Yeah, no wonder he was upset about all these guests. If he's the only one cooking and doing all the dishes. Oh yeah, he's always he's he's very often busy. Got that turtleneck. Have to make sure they don't drink as dry. And of course, need to get Mr. Richards his hot tot, eh? <laughs> and I don't want to keep Margot. Wait. Oh! Forget <laughs> about that last one, won't you? Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Alright, so that's probably a pretty good, pretty good stopping point, I think. Uh, yeah, let's ease drop on the boudoir. Let's see which is the boudoir. I'm still trying to learn the layout of the the house here, but I think the it's not there. Where's that boudoir? Uh, it is. Um, so there's the master bedroom, which is across from the bedroom that you and Kimmy share, and uh, it's in the southern wall. It's the left hand door. Uh. I will look in every single spot except the right one. <laughs> there, there's a map in the manual, but I mean, you know, I know people don't read the manuals. A manual? <laughs> Where's that? Is it upstairs? It's upstairs. I'm downstairs. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yes. It's oh, jeez. That might be why I couldn't find it. <laughs> This is a little bit tricky, but okay, that must be one more. There we go. Yeah, he's listen in. He speaks too far away from the door to hear them clearly. They'll listen at the door with an item that would help. I thought this was where I needed the, the glass, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Now, is there another way I can do this? Um, it's, no, no, not, you have to listen uh, with the glass on that one, so I don't... You probably wouldn't want to be hiding out in that room. No. Yeah, right. Listen li yeah. listen where the glass should work. Oh. If I can remember where that... Is it over here? Did you get the glass? You got the glass. I don't I got the mug. 
You know, oh, I played the this mug. the first time. I kept getting like the mug. I'd run over there and try the mug and be like, that's a <laughs> mug, you mug. <laughs> that's a glass. Look in the cabinet saucepan. Blue granite yeah. ware. Where is that glass? <laughs> it's the one beside the stove on to the right of the stove, the upper one. Open. Cupboard. There we go. Get the glass. Yep, there she is. Drinking glass. Spotless. Jack is quite fastidious. Well, I could even look at it with my little mm -hmm. magnifying glass. Okay. Now, the question is, can I get back to the boudoir? I wanted to show that, uh, what's going on there? Oh, she's asleep. <clears throat> oh, that last scene, the, the cliffhanger bit. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Listen to the glass. Uh, listen. What do I use glass or listen with glass? There we go. Yeah, there we go. I mean, it's a text parser, but it's very commonsensical. It's not anything weird to type in. Just listen with glass. <laughs> you know, that's what I would have thought, mm -hmm. th thought you should type. I do it again. I can never reach that spot. It's yeah, probably good that we can't actually see in there. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's the side of, that's a side effect of what we're doing, man. So many ears around. See, and you were thinking Jack is probably the only one that's on the level. <laughs> and here we go. I'm sure they will be gone soon. Bon nuit. Thinking quickly. She's French, she's French Canadian. Yeah, I like too how you you sort of automatically hid me behind that chest. Now, is that something you're going to do throughout the game, or would you just let me? <laughs> if you don't type it quick enough, you get busted in the game over. No, uh, no time sequences, no. That's good. <laughs> Tricking night. Excellent job. Kudos on your thorough investigative mm. technique. Ooh, I'm exhausting. I'm exhausted. What an interesting place. Yeah, here we go. Later that night. Thanks for playing my demo. If there are any bugs, please tell me at feedback. <laughs> no, folks, I hope you won't just use that only for bugs. I mean, it doesn't hurt to pass a compliment on. All right, so I think we're done. Well done. Very much story by Julia. Oh, you did this in Adventure Game Studio. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. what you uh, what you use for this. Oh, thanks for playing. All right, so that was uh, that was that. I Yay, didn't wanna... you did it! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, I did want to take a minute and see if you guys and gals has some questions for Julia. Let's see. Oh, there's a lot of comments. Let's see. So if you have a question, just type type it in there. Katrina says, the manual's what you read when you're away from <laughs> your computer and you can't play the game. Very, very true. Or as you're waiting for those loading screens, which I guess that's a thing of the past. Nobody gets nostalgic about those long loading <laughs> times. Oh, here's a question. Uh, Julia, did this is Pack Billy. You've already answered it on the ta text, but it's a good question. Did you do the music? It really works with the aesthetic of the game. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So what I think I, I mentioned there was um, there there's some MIDI sequences of some old Canadian folk tunes that were on the internet, and I've been using those. And they're public to, they're public domain uh, songs that were sort of yeah, as you know, folk tunes and folk songs. So that's what I've been using so far. Um, I am planning on commissioning a couple tracks. I already am speaking to a musician about that for the ending. And just just because the folk tunes 
aren't like as dramatic when you think of the ending of Dagger of Amon Ra or Christopher Glory 2, where you get this really dramatic kind of pursuit ending music. So I'm going to need a little bit of that at the end, but for the most part, I'm just using this, this uh, the MIDI arrangements I already have. Archie Bunker. Yes, Archie Bunker. That's who you're thinking about. Let's see, Jim plays games, multiple approaches to solve a problem. The multiple approaches to solving a problem is a really cool aspect. That's a good... Oh, he brings up a question, though. Could the character actually see from behind the tapestry? <laughs> That's what's oh, so funny. I think he got you there. <laughs> That's what's funny about these types of games. I mean, if you ever remember in Space Quest or King's Quest, if you're being chased by somebody and you go behind a pillar and the player cannot see the character, then if they're considered hidden, even though the characters on the screen would still be able to see them. It's always been a weird little trick of the eye that they would do with yeah, that. Yeah, Jim. So I would consider it, a, you know, like a tribute, maybe, or just like, a, I don't know what that is, but I don't even know what to call that interplay between what the player is seeing and what the other characters would be seeing. But whatever it is, I'm doing it too. So. Let's see, Dave says, I would have typed put glass up against wall and then put ear on glass. Yeah, I don't know how you, I don't know too much. I guess Adventure Game Studio must have some built-in routines for handling things like that, right? To, Mm -hmm. deal with the synonyms well, and multiple ways to yes absolutely <clears throat> so it's, it's always good for me i mean i was t actually taking that exact note right now because i know that for me i don't i don't i won't know every type of way they're going to try to say these things so it's good when people give me suggestions like mm -hmm. this like an add in um to make it more accessible for other people who would probably approach it that same way that i didn't think about in the first place so yeah it's been it's it, that's good I, i've added words like credenza, <laughs> credenza. to the game yeah, which I hadn't had before, yeah, but it's just... Type it, of credenza. What is that? What the heck's a credenza? <laughs> it's basically like the buffet in the dining room, that sideboard. So sideboard, buffet, credenza, all kind of will credenza. do the same thing. Well, I, I wouldn't know anything yeah. about that. I... <laughs> so someone said credenza. Look, well, easy enough for me to add that as a synonym, so I added it as a synonym. So if anyone else, had, you know, you can always email me if you think, oh, well, I tried that word for it, and it should be a word that can be used, that type of thing. Um, the one that I had the kind of the most... Um, sort of difficulty with adding synonyms were the trash cans because they're not really trash cans but people call them trash cans and waste paper basket waste basket you know people are going to want to look bin. at them yeah exactly so you kind of have to just everyone has a trash can i've heard I'm like ash ash can. Can? yeah why not? that's a trash ash can I, I don't know where that one comes from and ash can is kind of like a like a zine type of comic book i thought like i, did, I didn't think it had anything to do with the garbage but yeah, I mean that one in particular was one where people all had different ideas of what what, what that should be called. So rubbish, you know, rubbish, ref, refuse bin, <laughs> round file, yeah, round file. <laughs> well, the, yeah, this this file. Let's see. I saw a couple other questions there. Mm -hmm. I just I like the blue mug. How long have you worked on this? That's a good one. Oh, you said a few years on. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say because when I was starting it, I, I was, I'm a freelance illustrator, so when I started it, I just do a little bit at a time. I would leave it for months or weeks at a time, come back to it, forget what I had done, and just redo stuff or, you know, um, have to find my place again. And uh, I just only in the past, I would say, year, year and a half, where I decided I'm really going to settle in and try to finish this. I'm going to, you know, and then also promote it and do all that other stuff and take it, take it to conferences and things like that. Yeah, I don't um, think, I've, have I asked you about Dave Gilbert yet? Have you talked to him? I, you know, it's funny because uh, he also uses Adventure Game Studio. Yeah, yeah, he's a this, big, big yeah. advocate for it, right? Yeah, uh, so actually years ago, I, I had some question about commercially releasing games and I just emailed him and he responded very nicely. Oh, very he's a promptly. great, fantastic yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah um, so I, that's as far as uh, I, I know him. Uh, but just from that little little bit of talking to him, but I know he'll be at PAX West, so I'm hoping to meet up with him there and then and, and see him. And same with Francisco Gonzalez, who also does Adventure Game Studio games, commercial released. Mm -hmm. And he's also someone like me, where he does solo game development, where he does just about all of it, um, the art, the programming, the story, and everything. So uh, I would I'm really looking forward to meeting both of them um, because yeah, they they are well. yeah they're huge inspirations for me, obviously. I'm gonna get along like a house on fire. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Yeah, I'm just really a couple looking of questions. That. A little quick ones here. I think we can wrap these two up into one question. So Tibby's dudes ask, "What's your favorite adventure game?" 
And then Dave Dog, or Doge, he says, reminds me of Agatha Christie novels. Yeah. Really oh, yeah. inspired by those stories. Yeah, um, I didn't read a lot of Agatha Christie, but I mean, I have seen, you know, on television, they'd have um, that, that mystery Poirot. on PBS. They would have that one with the Edward Gorey beginning to it. That would be like an animated sequence that Edward Gorey did for PBS, and it was stunning. And, but, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, that kind of, it's kind of, it's um, a cozy mystery is the mm. actual specific genre where it's it's kind of, it's fairly tame. There's not a lot of extreme violence, and there's mm. not, like, a lot of, like, sexuality, and there's not... Um, like very strong it's language. It's good, all very good, yeah. clean murder. You know? Yes, <laughs> good, clean, cozy murder. You can just curl up with. And I wanted to give that feeling in the game too. I wanted it to be something comfy and cozy and 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 kind of. I don't want to say safe, but I guess in a way, way safe, because you know the world is tough. It's always been tough. It only gets tougher. And I wanted something where people could sort of retreat to this little game and have a nice time with it, you know, and kind of get involved in what's going on. Yeah, I grew up with my mo my mother's a huge Agatha Christie fan. Mm -hmm. My mom too. She has a lot of those old um, paperbacks from the seventies. Oh yeah. Yeah, but they're really scary covers, which yeah. would freak me out when I was. I'd always pull them out and just look at the cover and be scared and put them back. Is it possible? To, this is a good question from Jim. Is it? I think I know the answer. He says, it's impossible to get into an unwinnable state where you can't make progress but don't know you're stuck. Dead man walking syndrome. I am... There's, a, there's a term to, for that? Yeah, it's called dead man walking syndrome. And dead it's, man it's, walking it's, syndrome. Wow, I think yeah, I've had that syndrome a few times. <laughs> yeah, it's, to me, it's, it's just... It's, I don't want to call it bad design because at the time when Adventure Games had that, they were they were making it up as they went along. But that doesn't mean I can't learn from that and, and avoid it in my games. And the, which ties into, I guess, what my favorite adventure game is, which, which I hadn't actually got around to answering. It's funny that I, I kind of gravitate toward the aesthetic of Sierra games more, because actually I enjoyed playing the LucasArts adventures more because I was terrified of the depths in the, game, in the Sierra games and the idea that you could get into these unwinnable situations. Mm -hmm. And LucasArts didn't do that. LucasArts was more forgiving in their game design and their puzzle design. So I actually enjoyed, uh, I think maybe my favorite would have been either the EGA Monkey Island 1 or Day of the Tentacle would be my would be That's one of them. Very solid choices. And yeah, it's uh, the aesthetic of the, of the of Quest for Glory and Colonel's Quest, of course, especially, are the ones that I just went back to because that 16 color palette and that those graphics those crisp crisp graphics is is just great for me because when they transition to, uh, to vga uh, the graphics i like them but they kind of because they were still low res and vga they kind of get fuzzy you know mm. in a way and i actually prefer that really crisp crisp look of that ega stuff that was actually vector based which i was shocked to learn later in life uh, and you can actually look at them, and if you can, like what I was doing when I was studying the Colonel's Bequest shots, you can really study them and see exactly how they use that palette to accomplish the effect that they were trying to accomplish. Especially with the Colonel's Bequest, where you had this beautiful, like, moody lighting and shadow, and that exterior of the plantation where it was very dusky mm -hmm. twilight. And you could just break down how those two artists, I think there were only two artists on that, um, accomplish that and for me that's like i could see the magic happening i can sort of learn from that more easily than um the vga stuff which was painted backgrounds that they down then down rest mm -hmm. yeah you articulated that a lot better than i ever could but you know, that's something i was always struck by a lot of people just think well ega is obsolete once vga came out <laughs> like, it's, yeah, maybe but there's something about the style you know the aesthetic i guess of that that will never be obsolete yeah, I, I, I hesitate to say that v EGA could be considered obsolete when compared yeah. to VGA in the same way that I would not say that text parser games are obsolete compared to point and click. Yeah. I think it's different. And actually, I explained it. I was talking to a friend about this, and I explained it like it's kind of like the difference between a manual car and an, an automatic car where you're, you're driving both cars. And just depending on the experience you want to have in your car, you, you would have to take more steps to accomplish that same thing or have fewer steps. And I actually drive automatic. I don't even know how to drive a manual car, but the people who drive manual aren't wrong, and that's not obsolete. 
It's just a different way of playing something. And uh, they can offer you different experiences, obviously. But I would never say one is obsolete over the other. I prefer a stick myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. All right, folks. Well, I think we're about done. Just going to take a quick gander here to make sure we didn't miss anybody. Is there anybody here that we haven't answered one of their questions? Limitations do a lot for creativity. Yeah, that's a good way to put that, too. I do pixel art, and the limitations are really fun to work with. And yeah, Katrina, I think that's a good a good thought, too. I like ZX Spectrum colors. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> you just can't please everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, I think, uh, you know, just to wrap up here, you can get this demo that you saw me playing over on Steam. Where where else can you get it, Julie? Uh, you can get it directly from my site, thecrimsondiamond.com, where you'll find, as I think someone mentioned here, yeah, I do have, like, a, a dev blog. You can subscribe to the newsletter. I have a monthly newsletter called, ooh, and I'm late on it. I have a monthly newsletter called, and get it put out. You should kind of develop the, the conferences and stuff I'll be going to, and um, just, you know, like my, my social media links and articles that I got written today. And, uh, recently, there was a medium.com article about you, and you'll find all that stuff uh, on there. And also, I that does make this a YouTube video, just it up on the channel. I'll put it on, I've got a playlist on my channel that shows sort of let's plays and demos that other people have done of, the, of it. Some with me, some without. Some with commentary, some without. So there's hopefully, if you don't um, have time or you should have time to play the demo, you can actually watch it from beginning to end or watch people like play little different aspects of it. Get an idea of what it's like before you before you mm -hmm. actually decide to either wish list or off the yeah, So that, that's a good way to take a look at it if you can't play the demo for whatever reason. Yeah, I think we're kind of breaking up our breaking up over Skype or something here, but uh, just to re just to repeat what she said in case you, it got garbled on your end. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to go to the crimsondiamond.com It's T-H-E-C-R-I-M-S-O-N-D-I-A-M-O-N-D.com <laughs> We'll put the link for you there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just looking at it now. We've got the download there. Uh, somebody was saying something about a blog. Is there a link to the blog yeah. on here? Uh, yeah, there's a dev blog. Hold on, let me see if I can just link directly to it. Um, but yeah, you can get the monthly edition of that dev blog every um, every month to your email box if you do if you subscribe to. Um, there's a subscription link on the, just that main page. You can subscribe to the newsletter, so that would be a good way to do it. Or I just dump them all in one web page, which I call dev blog, <laughs> and mm -hmm. you can just check them all out there if you want to too. Yeah, I love reading those stuff. I'm just looking at the mm -hmm. hist your history here. Mm -hmm. Combining the rose... I think this is so well put. Combining the rose-colored nostalgia mm -hmm. goggles of growing up in that era with some <laughs> proof-of-concept artwork. Julia was ready to start developing her game. Because yeah, I think for those of us who... You know, you sort of have this no nostalgia for those games, but then when you go back and try to play them, it's like all the old problems rear their <laughs> ugly heads. You know, it's, it's not as <laughs> smooth of a gameplay experience as you remember. Uh, but this, you know, it's like all the all the fun stuff you remember with, with happiness, without the uh, un terrible stuff, you know, the dead man walkings and <laughs> mm -hmm. all of this business that, you know, we just would rather forget. That stuff shouldn't be repeated. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's that's uh, the Crimson Diamond. I'll hopefully get you back on when you uh, release the the final version of this. I'd love that. Say it'll be out next week. Or... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Anxiety oh, starts yeah. to sweat. Steam it um, now. <laughs> <laughs> Look that bridge. Like... Come on. Uh, the first article that I have um, that talks about any type of launch date is in German, so hopefully not many of you can read it. But it said optimistically the end of this year, which isn't happening. Uh, it's more like, I think, beginning of uh, 2020, first quarter 2020 is what I'm shooting for. Uh, this is my first game, so I don't really know how this goes. And I, I've been told that the last 10% takes, you know, twice as long as everything else. So we will see. We will learn together. When it will both be surprised when it launches. <laughs> you said it took um, a few years to make this demo, right? Is that yeah, what 
Yeah, on and yeah, on and off. Just you know, start eating, stopping, starting, stopping. And actually, what happened with the demo? Sorry, I'm kind of keeping you longer. But real quick, I I, I show this this demo at uh, last last fall in Toronto. It's something called Wordplay, which is a narrative uh, narrative game showcase that they do every year. And I basically had to just. I had everything basically in place for the demo, but I had to just package it up in a, in a way that people could play it on their own without crashing anything. And so I actually had quite a bit of the game already done, just not in a directed manner before I decided I was going to have that demo slice available. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to judge how long it's going to take me. Mm -hmm. But just having that motivation where I needed to show it somewhere publicly meant I just had to just get myself in order to do that. And then when I did that, I thought, you know what, I should just focus on this for now and just try to get it out, finish it, um, and see where it takes me. I think that's a good approach. It's done when it's done, folks. It's done when it's done. Yeah, I had to put a, a, like a holder uh, <laughs> for the Steam page. They want you to give them like a, like a launch date, but that's not shown, thank goodness. And it's probably not true anyway. So, yeah. Well, I know, but a lot of great games ended up bad when the person got in too big of a hurry, right? Just yeah, take your time. <laughs> uh, a rushed game is bad forever, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It was uh, Miyamoto said that, right? I think so. Yeah, I think quite, yeah. Very impressive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, I won't take up any of any more of your time. Uh, thanks very much for this. We'll make sure to get those uh, links in the show notes, and you know, thanks to everybody who uh, was chatting with us giving us the comments the questions great stuff thank you for watching and see you soon good luck julia yes thanks so much for having me okay i'll go ahead and stop this and talk to you soon i hope <laughs> not too long <laughs>